Hello everyone! In this video I will show you how to reverse engineer MIPS uh, native library. Actually this library is for uh, Android. Well, it's just uh, actually a Linux library. I will show you uh, how to reverse engineer it and uh, try to find exactly what we're looking for. Also modify the library to uh, modify the code of the library to make it uh, do uh, a different thing from what it's actually doing. So let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, we need to have a MIPS toolchain to be able to uh, reverse engineer the MIPS library. So we need to download the MIPS uh, toolchain for this. So I have already downloaded it here and I'm switching to the directory. And then I'm using uh, object dump to convert the, the native library. As you can see there, it's libiface.so. Uh, I will convert it to its uh, assembly code. So the minus D switch will do that. Okay, so now it has finished uh, generating the assembly code. So let's uh, check it out. This is the generated uh, MIPS uh, disassembly from the, from the native library. This library checks the license file, and then if it's not, this file is not found or is, um, is wrong, uh, it will return an error and you cannot initialize it. And my idea here to, for reverse engineering this file is that we need to find where this uh, verification is done and make it always return successful so we can continue initializing the library. Let's search, for example, for verify. Let's see what strings we can find with this word. It looks like we are very uh, lucky because not only the strings are there, uh, the functions also, the library seems to have been compiled with the debug uh, switch uh, turned on, so we can even see the, the original function names. So. This is uh, pretty interesting and would let us reverse engineering much faster. As you can see, we also have like 419 matches, which is a lot of matches. So to get a quick glance about, um, about all of them, uh, what you're going to do is use grep instead of searching inside the Sublime Text, because as you can see, there are too many of them and it will take much longer. The idea now is trying to find um, the top level function that does the, um, the verifying. Okay, so as you can see, there are a lot of them. Uh, there are a lot of verify words. Some of them have nothing to do with, um, with our purpose, but um, so others you, you can see that uh, there's a verify license or project verify I project license uh, and so on. So we need to find the root call for all of these. As you can see here, this function is called from, it's not called from another verify function. Uh, so this might be interesting to look, uh, to look at it. This other I license verify function also looks interesting, but as you can see in the end, it also calls the, the other function ZN8 I license six verify. And, and this function um, does not call any other verify function. So um, let's assume, okay, let's just focus on, on this uh, ZN8 uh, I license 6 verify. We check its address, we copy the address and we check it on the assembly file to see the full function. So this is the function we're dealing with. Let's check what it is actually doing. Fortunately, this function is pretty simple. Um, it's pretty small. So as you can see, it does some checks on the values, then jumps to this move instruction before returning. So one thing to note is that W0 is the actual um, return value for uh, in MIPS uh, calling convention. 
So w0 is the return value for this function. As you can see, sometimes it sets it to 1 and sometimes it sets it to 0. It defaults starting with 0, as you can see in the second instruction. Uh, but um, I will, uh, my guts tell me that 1 is, is going to be true, that the, the check succeeded, and 0 is going to be false, that the check didn't succeed. So taking this into account, what we are going to do is modify this function now to make it always return uh, a one. However, we cannot just uh, leave uh, a return one as a as a, as code because the elf uh, the elf file the so file, which is the elf executable format, has uh, takes into account the size for relocation and stuff like that and the offsets. We cannot modify the offsets of the rest of the functions or this function. So what we're going to do is. I use the no operation instruction to actually do nothing for most of the function except returning a value of one, which we actually already have this, um, this instruction already is coded, so we don't even need to add it. So let's check this uh, no operation instruction and what is machine code is. Okay, here we have it. It's uh, D50321F, okay. So we'll keep it for later. And we go back to our function and try to sketch it to see how we are going to need to modify it. Of course, uh, not that here I'm modifying the assembly file that was generated by object dump. Uh, of course, here we are not modifying the actual SO file. Um, so just this is just to show you what we are going to actually do in the binary file and what will be the resulting code. For this so this is the resulting function as you can see everything is a no operation just to keep the size we are also lucky because MIPS all instruction in MIPS are 32 bits wide so it's no problem we can put any any operation that will do nothing uh, actually no operation is not really an instruction it's just like ORs it's an OR if, if I remember correctly but uh, doesn't matter anyway so uh, what we are going to do here is that we as you can see the function will do absolutely nothing except move um, 1 to the W1 register then move the W1 register to W0 register which like I said before is the um, is the return uh, register for for in the MIPS convention calling convention and then return from the function uh, from the function with a success, which we assume is one. Now we are going to actually modify the SO library using a hexadecimal uh, editor to input the values that we saw before. So we need first thing uh, first uh, the first thing we need to do is find the offset for the function. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, we are going to move now to the offsets, uh, to the offsets, and we can check if this, uh, just to make sure we are on the right spot, we are going to make sure that this value is actually the value of the first instruction uh, we have in the function. Okay, so it is, it is actually the, the right value, but it is, it is expressed in uh, big NDN encoding. So that also means that what, uh, the, fun the value we are going to substitute it for need also to be expressed in big NDN. Okay, so now that we got the right big NDN value, I'm going to paste it in the file. Oops, that inserted it. I need to overwrite it instead. You can see the indicator in the bottom right of the editor i mean this is bless editor it's a very basic editor but it will do the job so now we need to paste these knobs um until we find we find this value that is 21 um zero zero okay let's see if we can find it here you see this is the the move uh one instruction now oh, we're going to skip it and continue from there until we again find the E0 instruction, 
so we just keep on going so this is the easier instruction as you can see the both uh, two final instructions do not need to be to, to be modified okay so this is it uh, I hope you enjoyed this this video if you have any comments or something you want me to explain uh, further please don't hesitate to comment and see you next time